Well, hello out there in podcast land. <laughs> this is uh, John here, your uh, humble host with my co-host, Angela. Angela, how you doing over there? I'm doing all right. Good. Yeah. And today our topic is going to be about writing and recovery. And, uh, you know, this is something that I, I don't know, I've been thinking about writing a little bit. Well, for a couple of reasons. Um it was uh, about a month ago I started a class through Coursera to try to improve my writing. And I've been really working mm. on it. Yeah. And and I find writing to be so difficult when I try to write well, you know. And um, But, you know, I thought that this topic would be more not about that type of writing, but the type of writing that I've done most of my life, which I've mentioned before, is, is as a way to help me make sense of whatever is going on in my head, you know, um, from as long as I can remember, I would write if I was, um, to understand my feelings and thoughts and, um, and it has always helped me, you know, and I'd carried that over into my recovery as well. Uh, in my early years, you know, I kept a, kept a journal and I would write about things and, um, yeah. So, you know, it's always been something that's been very therapeutic and helpful for me. And I think it has for a lot of other people too. I was surprised at the um, reaction we got on Facebook when we announced this topic that people seem to be pretty excited about it. So here we go. It's writing and recovery. Yeah. Writing and recovery. <laughs> so Angela, you want to, you, you want to start with your experience and thoughts about this topic? Sure. Um, so some of the stuff that I thought about, um, <laughs> and I, I do think it's funny because uh, to share that, you know, um, you and I kind of go uh, back and forth a little bit on uh, topics, you know, when we think about something, we're like, what do you think about this? And then, you know, we each kind of give some input and, and your original thought was journaling. Right. And, uh, and I'm like, um, you know, it's not that narrow. sexy. Yeah. <laughs> sexy that I don't really journal anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, let's, let's talk more about writing in general. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, and so one of the things that came up for me was, uh, a kid, you know, I've, I've been writing since I was fairly young, since I learned to write. Um, and, uh, and it might be a little bit more gendered, uh, but I was thinking about diaries, you know, mm -hmm. um, particularly in grade school. Um, the big thing was, uh, for girls to have a diary and then you'd have like a little lock on it with a little key and, you know, and, uh, you know, you're, you're, older siblings, if you had them, would know how to pick that and see what you wrote anyway. But you were, you know, <laughs> supposed to write your deepest, darkest, you know, secrets and hopes and dreams, you know, in a in a diary. Um, and, uh, and I still have a couple of the diaries from when I was a kid. Um, one of them was, I, I think like the third grade, it's, you know, hardly legible. Um, but, uh, but the other one was, uh, was, I think fourth and fifth grade, uh, fourth, fifth and sixth grade, um, that I kept. And, uh, and I haven't looked at it in, in probably a decade, I think in early recovery I did. Um, and that was only because I was moving and so now it's in like a locked, um, briefcase type thing, you know, as if it's some sort of major <laughs> confidential, <laughs> you know, thing, but it's, it's locked away. And, uh, yeah, when I get to the part of my life that I'm going to write my memoir, you know, I'll, I'll dig it out and then deal with the trauma of reading what, you know, my kid brain, uh, thought about. Uh, but those are some of the things of, of writing that, um, that first came to mind for me is, um, is that, you know, that I've been writing for a long time and, uh, and writing about my feelings and about whatever the situation I was in and how I, I felt about it. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, I think that that's, you know, one of the things that's been a healthy aspect of my life is when I'm consistently, you know, journaling or writing about what's going on. Um, but that, uh, you know, in recovery, we kind of learn to do it a little bit differently, um, or we have other options, yeah. I guess. Uh, so you know, one of the things that came up, um, I'm working with somebody and she's in it, in uh, treatment. And so in the treatment center, um, and I've heard this, you know, several times, at least around here is that they have people write out their life story. And, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm like, I guess it's a good thing I didn't go to treatment because I wouldn't still be there. <laughs> you know, writing out my life story. Um, but uh, yeah, they write out their, their life story um, type of a thing. 
Um, and, uh, and so, and that's how, you know, helps them, you know, to get going when it's time for the, the fourth step is that they kind of have a little bit there to, to help them start writing the inventories. But, um, but yeah, doing a fourth step inventory and learning how to do that process and, and make a list and then being able to examine, you know, what your thoughts and motivations are for things, um, and get a, a different perspective in a, you know, another view on reality that you might not have had uh, before. Um, that's, you know, one of the ways that, uh, one of the things that we learn to do in recovery is, is to write like that. And so I think, you know, that a lot of us use uh, some forms of that, you know, when we're working through difficulties now, but the biggest thing most of us do is lists. I mean, I think a lot yeah. of us write lists and particularly if we're stressed about things, we're like, okay, mm -hmm. I have way too much going on. I need to write a list. And then, uh, and then there are all these management tools <laughs> that, that go from lists, you know, like uh, getting things done by David Allen and how to, you know, use lists and bullet journals and things like that. Lots of different um, options. Mm -hmm. um, but um, yeah, um, those are some of the stuff that that first came up um, on the writing and on, um, you know, lists, uh, you know, diaries, uh, things like that. Um, and then the topic that uh, came up, um, it comes up fairly often actually um, on the doing the fourth step, whether, you know, doing it like um, by hand or yeah. by um, spreadsheet and that, right. you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. And that I am a huge proponent of uh, doing it by hand and, um, and the, you know, and I think I've talked a little bit on here, the reasons why, you know, that it, it slows your brain down um, yeah. to write, you know, so you get, um, you get more out. I, I think um, I was reading that in the 1980s uh, is when the psychologists had, you know, decided to term it the writing cure, um, which mm. is, you know, having people write uh, 15 to 30 minutes a day, and that they've they've done, you know, multiple studies that show that there's a measurable effect, both, you know, uh, physically and, and mentally, and health benefits, you know from people who wrote 15 to 30 minutes a day about, you know, what's going on. So improved uh, immune function, all of that kind of stuff. So, uh, so it helps with that. Um, and also that, you know, it helps with the neural pathways that um, I guess, as we write, uh, we, you know, have to use different strokes and we have to really think about how they go and which direction right. they go and, you know, things um, uh, that are different than if you just, you know, type something, you know, push a button. Um, and so you're using a lot of different parts of your brain. You're having to, you know, think cognitively. You're, you're having to um, use your motor skills. You're having to um, use, you know, memory. Um, and so you have a lot of different um, parts of your brain activated yeah. at the same it's, time. Yeah, it's a very, very different experience. Um, you know, of course, I grew up pre-computers. So when I was going mm -hmm. to school and even my uh, when I was in, going to college the first time, there were no computers to write on. So we had paper and pen and uh, that's all I knew. And I think I was, I was, I know I was telling you before we started that I went back to school in my late thirties and in my early forties and went to college again. And so we're using computers and I had a really difficult time shifting from writing by pen on paper to going to computers. But now I'm, I'm used to that. Now that I do all my writing on a computer and I can, I no longer write on paper, but it used to be, that's all I knew. Mm -hmm. And there is a very different experience. My first fourth step, in fact, I did by hand because there weren't computers. <laughs> there wasn't anything, at least not in my house. Um, so I had, um, I did that one by hand, but when I did another one, um, many, many, many years later, I did it on, on my computer. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, uh, you know, the, the second one that I did wasn't as thorough as the first one. It didn't really need to be, mm -hmm. but um, I don't know. I, I guess, I guess I got benefit both times, you know, but there is definitely a difference I know from the two different types of writing. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, like I said, uh, for, well, in college I, I did handwriting and even when I took some classes later, I still did it by hand. Um, 
because I watch, you know, too much PBS and Nova or something, um, and, mm -hmm. and had heard, you know, that uh, that you retain more when you take notes by hand. And I guess one of the reasons is that um, you can't uh, take notes verbatim, you know, word for word, um, because it goes too fast. So you have to take what you just heard and condense it into something that makes sense to you. Yeah. And, uh, and so therefore you're processing it in real time. And so you, uh, you retain more information um, from, you know, what you're studying or what the class is. Um, and, you know, so that that's why I did it. Um, I don't know, you know, which classes I did it in. So that may not be true, <laughs> because mm -hmm. I ha haven't retained it as much. Um, but that was still a while ago. Um, but yeah, you know, one of the things I was reading too about um, writing by hand is that uh, people who write by hand tend to employ a larger vocabulary um, because they do slow down enough to pick, you know, just the right words um, because you're taking, you know, time and time is valuable. Um, and so you really want, you know, whatever you're writing to be what you mean. Um, and that they, you know, done some studies that show that people who just type um, tend to repeat uh, similar words uh, too often. So their, their yeah. vocabulary is, um, is shorter. Yeah. Um, uh, also, you know, one of the things with writing that, you know, I would encourage right now and that I know has made me feel, you know, feel good during the pandemic um, is when I write cards or letters to people. Um, because, um, you know, one thing is, uh, is that, uh, you know, I take time. So it's, yeah. it's you know, something that, um, that I'm taking time to, you know, really think about what I want to say. And that I know when I receive um, letters and cards from people, I mean, each person's handwriting is so unique that, you know, it, it I don't know, I, I guess it's bonding or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's like a connection because, you know, um, I can feel that person in a way that doesn't come across on a keyboard. Um, and also, you know, on the keyboard, sometimes, you know, things can be said or typed and sent, uh, you know, way too quickly. Oh, yeah. And that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and we've all experienced that. And, and so, you know, there's part of me that's like, yeah, you know, if, if we uh, didn't type or didn't have that ability, we might be nicer to each other right now because it would take more time to write down all the mm -hmm. nasty things that we want to, you know, say to the other person or respond with or reply. Um, and uh, <laughs> so also who knows? May, maybe not. About the, the, the letter writing thing. Um, I know that you've probably heard this. Uh, people would suggest uh, in meetings oftentimes and it's been suggested to me, and I actually found it helpful that if you had some sort of a resentment or oh, unresolved feeling, if, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. about someone who might be deceased, mm -hmm. um, to write a letter to that person. And I actually did that. I wrote a letter to my mother mm -hmm. um, who died. Um, she died from a suicide when I was a kid. And um, I don't. I never really fully dealt with it um, and, until I was until I was sober, my first few years in, in the program, I guess, maybe even mm -hmm. a third year or so. But on, on, I remember writing that letter to her about how I felt about her death and about her. And I, I let myself be angry. And it was just a really, it was an emotional experience, but it kind of helped me um, put all of that into perspective, I guess, and get, yeah. a, get some sort of an understanding of her and I actually did that before I did my um, my inventory, the fourth step inventory. And, I, and it may have helped me do that. Um, but it was like mm -hmm. one of the things that I just felt like it was something I needed to do at that time. I needed to somehow get through that. It was something that was really blocking me. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah. So, you that know, writing sense. a letter to somebody mm -hmm. that you don't mail that might not even be alive can actually be very, very, very helpful. Um, right. It was yeah. to me anyway. Yeah, um, I can't remember the name of the professor, but um, she's at University of Washington, and um, and one of the things she was saying is that um, that the again the neural pathways that we use uh, to write um, in the brain 
either go through or go really near the same ones that manage emotion. And so oh, yeah. that's one of the reasons um, that uh, oftentimes when people write things out by hand, um, it's more therapeutic because they can get to those um, feelings yeah. more, you know, they yeah. have more access to that. And so it's less, uh, you know, wrote, <laughs> get it wrote. Anyway, mm -hmm. robotic or, you know, that kind of a thing. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, those are some of the things that, you know, the main thing is it's, it slows us down uh, as in uh, slows our, our brain so that we can, you know, think more clearly, um, you know, and, and uh, really write down things that, that are more important uh, mm -hmm. to us. Um, uh, one doctor, and I, I can't pronounce the, the name, um, she's a professor of neurobiology at Duke uh, University. Um, she did some studies showing that it uh, handwriting um, helps the brain stay younger or longer um, because um, we have to activate so many different areas of the brain um, when we're writing something. Again, you know, uh, memory and thinking and, you know, language, um, working memory and you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, um, some of the stuff that I have found useful um, in sobriety besides the the stuff from, you know, uh, doing, you know, um, fourth step and 10th step, if you will, and, and things like that uh, is um, gratitude journals. Um, oh, yeah. you know, those are helpful. Um, sometimes, you know, like a, you know, a long one is, is I've good. heard people say to write a gratitude list, but I've never yeah. heard of a gratitude journal until you mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, they have them. And, and sometimes I think there's like a, a five minute a day one, you know, um, but basically they have, you know, just little prompts um, mm -hmm. that, uh, that they give you that, you know, you can write a little bit on like, you know, um, today was, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm thankful for, and, um, you know, I, I have gratitude this day and, and, uh, you know, this brought me joy and, and, uh, you know, so just little things that don't take a long time to do. Um, and so that's, you know, that's something that's helpful because <laughs> sometimes people either can't as, you know, it has been mentioned in here, um, you know, sometimes as we age, uh, it's not as easy to write by hand for yeah. as long a period of time. Um, and so, you know, I, I think these, you know, shorter gratitude journals or, um, you know, littler, littler <laughs> yeah. prompts that don't require, you know, an extended answer um, might be helpful for that so that you're still getting some of the same um, benefits of handwriting. You just, you know, don't have to do it for as long. Um, there's also stuff like um, uh, mindful journaling. Um, my mom had this book and uh, and it was an exercise that I was going to do with you beforehand, but uh -huh. we both kind of had a week that we needed yeah. to <laughs> decompress uh, before we started the show. Um, but one of the, the prompts it has um, is to look at, uh, look at what is around you right now choose one object to focus on, you know, what, and then you, it has some other question prompts, like what made you choose that item? Um, really look at it and study it closely. What appeals to you? What doesn't appeal? Um, what does the, the object mean to you? You know, and notice any emotions that surface or come up um, and think about where the item came from um, and what it's doing in the spot you have it in right now. Um, so, you know, just kind of engaging with that item. And so writing about that uh, yeah. as, uh, you know, as something to just get your mind going on, on something else um, and to activate, you know, the brain into to thinking about that. And sometimes it can lead to, you know, some feelings of gratitude. And sometimes, you know, there's feelings of resentment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like my partner bought this and I hate it. And, uh, you know, <laughs> we have this strange art object in our house that's I think supposed to be a lawn ornament. Um, and we don't know what it actually is. It looks like it could be either a rabbit or a dog <laughs> or, um, yeah, or a, a kangaroo. It's just, yeah. we have no clue what it is because, you know, it's, it's made of, I think, found objects and stuff. Right. And so, yeah, so uh, for a while I'd look at that thing and just be kind of annoyed because I really wanted to know what it actually was. And mm -hmm. then, you know, now I've come to the point that I appreciate that it's, uh, that I don't know what it is and I don't know if I'll 
I'll ever know what it is. And so that is what it is, you know? Yeah. So yeah, very mindful about it. Um, but, uh, you know, just Someone funny. Someone made a comment on the face on Facebook and I don't know mm -hmm. who it is, but I'm wondering if it's Robert B. Okay. He said, it, Robert's really an interesting guy. He writes poetry for AA Beyond Belief. Yeah, yeah. And he says that writing in a journal in early recovery was challenging, even though I have journaled since my mid teens. That was when I began to write poetry. This has and continues to help me with awareness and find clarity. I write after meditation each morning. Mm -hmm. That really sounds like Robert. He is so yeah. amazing. I, th the first time I met Robert, he reached out to me uh, through Facebook Messenger, and he told me that he write, he's written a poem a day ever since he's been sober. Mm -hmm. and he's got thousands of them. <laughs> and he wanted to know if, if we could use them on AA Beyond Belief. Yep, that's him. Yeah. And I said, absolutely. And so he has been sending poems um, every Sunday or actually sends them a few days before that that we post. And it has really um, helped me personally because I have not been reading poetry until Robert came along and started oh. sending me his poetry. And I get so much out of it because he, he can say things in his poems mm -hmm. that you can't say in an essay. You know, right. like he'll take something uh, uh, that's going on in the world that we're all stressed out about, we're all depressed about, we're all sad about, but it's political. It's like if you wrote an essay about it, you'd have to get into the nitty gritty of the politics and so forth. Right. You can take the situation and put it in poetry and use metaphor and, and it's just amazing that he can do that so it's like every sunday he'll write something and that in a meeting could be like an outside issue but mm -hmm. the way he does it with his poetry it's pure feeling it's all yeah. how he feels it's his feeling and it's it's so relatable so i really love yeah. i love his work you know but yeah it's gotten me to um appreciate the power of poetry. I can't write poems, I, <laughs> but um, I sure do admire him and others who can do do that. We're yeah. a lot of good comments out there. Yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I love poetry and uh, wrote poetry as a child and was even published in the fifth grade. Um, oh, really? Yeah. So I, I used to used to do that more. I I haven't done that in a while, um, but uh, yeah, I think I'm I'm more of an essayist. <laughs> now, what is it that uh, Fred likes to say that I have a lot of words that I say quickly? Right. Um, so yeah, um, but I, I do I do like that. And and you know, was it you? Somebody mentioned the the um, the writing something after. So, oh, it was you know Robert. It was uh, mm -hmm. writing after the morning meditation uh, yeah. type thing, or um, and that made me think of Joe's book. You know, the Beyond Belief Agnostic Musings for Twelve Step Life. I'm going to start charging him every time I mention right. this on anything because <laughs> yeah, I could use the money. But anyway, you know, so like on a lot of his. Um, his pages uh, at the bottom, he asks some questions and, and these would be great for, you know, journaling or writing about too, you know? So just like one of them that I just opened to says something like, do I consciously nurture an attitude of love and tolerance? You know, uh, when I reach out to help another, am I mindful to help them find their own salvation, not the salvation, you know, um, that kind of a thing. So I think that's helpful. I think um, turning on music, you know, is mm -hmm. uh, you, you can turn on a song and listen to it and then write down, you know, your feelings oh, about the song. Caller. You know, caller. sounds good. All right. See who this is. Oh, hey, uh -oh. hello, this is Fred. Oh, Fred. Hey, Fred. Fred in Virginia. Oh, boy. Hey, no. you, know, you know what? I was thinking of, about all the grapevines, the oh, wine, yeah. the grapevines. Uh huh. And, uh, you know, most of them don't have anything, the writings don't have too much to do with secular sobriety. But I'd, I'd like to say, but many times when I didn't have a meeting to go to or, or whatever, you know, uh, I used the grapevine readings because uh, it's a once a month of uh, like a little magazine that you can get from AA. And it helped me many, many times to read, to read those, those short stories of, that people wrote about themselves. And you know, they'd have like a six or seven stories in the in the monthly plus the 
the the the uh, list of different things that were happening mm-hmm. and all so that really that really helped me so so much in, uh, in times when the uh, you know there wasn't you you come home from work at at eleven o'clock or something and you're not going to call somebody at that hour or something yeah. like that so I'd pick up a grapevine and read those yeah. those writings mm-hmm. that people wrote. Yeah. yeah, and we were gonna, you know, get to uh, suggesting that you know people write uh, to Grapevine and mm-hmm. and the other blogs and things that uh, that are in existence now, um, because we need uh, more stories of people in recovery who are atheist, agnostic, free thinkers, pagans, whatever, general heathens, <laughs> and yeah. uh, you know, yeah. So getting more of those stories out would would be great, and so um, yeah. That was you know, are you on still, my list. Are you still teaching? Are you still teaching school this this year? I, I'm not a teacher, so I think the person you were thinking of was just yeah. uh, somebody that we had on the podcast. But uh, but no, I am I am not I a thought, teacher. I thought you taught a history or something like that. Nope, that was Sam. You're talking about Sam yeah. from Kansas. Yep. Yep. Will Fred. Oh, okay. Thank you for calling. I appreciate it. I want to go to some comments that um, people are posting in the in Facebook. Um, oh, did you have something else, Sam? Uh, Fred, that you want to okay, say? Well, thanks. Okay. Well, thanks for having me again. Oh, thank you for and, calling. Uh, I appreciate you know, it. Thank you so the, much. The great mind always always was good. Thanks. I appreciate you, John. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Have a good week. Take care. Bye bye. Thanks. I wanted to get to some comments because there's yeah. such, so many good comments in here. Um, Anna M, mm-hmm. she, she wrote, one of the most powerful writing exercises in the early days of my recovery was writing a letter to myself. On a good day, writing to myself on a future difficult day, I wrote out the reasons why staying sober is important to me. Mm-hmm. I am a friend, a peer, a mother, an advocate, etc. This is only temporary and you will get through this. This letter to myself included details about how far I've come and my strengths and goals. I really like that. And that seems a lot like what you were talking about as far mm-hmm. as gratitude journals too, in a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? Well, and also when I am, I'm taking somebody through the steps um, in step three, we kind of write like uh, I, it's turned into a, a, um, a mission statement um, mm-hmm. type of a thing, but it's basically that, you know, like what is it that uh, uh, an affirmation, what is it that you want to do that's going to help you, you know, stay motivated to continue through this process. And uh, so somewhat of a, a similar thing. Um, but yeah, I, I was seeing also the the writing on, on people with uh, disabilities. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and I, I have um, learning disabilities as, as well. Um, uh, you know, most of the time they're, they're good now, but for a long time, I, um, oh, wow. <laughs> they're kind of odd. I would um, confuse the number two and the letter N and I would transpose yeah. those. Um, and uh, and yeah, and I had a speech impediment as well. So uh-huh. so learning to write um, and uh, speak was was a little bit difficult for me. Um, That's but a good point, you know, yeah, yeah you, you know, boy, yeah, you, you, you have to be careful. You know, um, if if you're always giving writing assignments out as a sponsor, you know, think about the person that you're assigning it to. Maybe they don't like to write. Maybe they have they have dysgraphia, like Anna does. And I have to be honest with you, I never heard that term. I had to Google it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, there are learning disabilities out there. That's, that's a good Mm -hmm. point. Um, and it can be, you know, to get, to be assigned to write, Mm -hmm. it makes it really difficult to actually do. I, for me, it really has to be motivated from a feeling deep uh, if my own desire to write or make sense of something. Yeah, I think in early recovery, though, most of us have that, (laughs) you know, because we just really want, you know, the pain to stop. Um, we really want, you know, to, to get better, um, you know, whatever it is, we just don't want to drink. And so if this person says, you know, write an essay, then, you know, then we write essays. So, so I agree. I think later in life, um, when you have some recovery, then yeah, the the motivation, you know, isn't quite as strong to, you know, you have to, you have to learn to be disciplined and motivate yourself. Um, 
And, uh, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying that, you know, okay. um, he likes to write now he writes, he writes, I know he went to school to learn how to write. He's a great writer. He's written a book. Mm -hmm. He likes to post, um, on, uh, AA Agnostica and AA Beyond Belief. He's done a lot of writing there. Uh, he says that it's, um, it's uh, like meditative for him. And mm -hmm. I've heard him talk about how much he enjoys the process of writing and then to see after he likes to actually post his writing so that other people can read it, yeah. which takes some guts. I mean, I, <laughs> I'm afraid to post my own writing on AA Beyond Belief, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, it's embarrassing for me sometimes to put my stuff out there, but Bob does it all the time and he's so yeah. very talented, but he likes the process of going through it and then getting the reactions and, and seeing, um, you know, watch, watching his work go out there like that. Mm. But, um, yeah, for me, I don't know if I, sometimes I guess it can be meditative, but for me, it kind of depends what I'm doing. Um, like lately I've been trying to improve my writing. I've been writing some stuff that I thought I might post on AA Beyond Belief. And I, it's just been very, uh, been a very difficult process for me. So I've mm -hmm. written like several essays that I've never really completely finished but that wasn't like really relaxing for me. <laughs> I don't know why I was putting right. myself through that. But uh, yeah, I'm just trying to improve my writing. That's all, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I get it. Um, I find that uh, I think, like Jackie put earlier, um, that uh, when I'm journaling or writing, you know, my feelings or trying to work through a situation, you know, I, I always do the handwriting thing and uh, mm -hmm. and prefer that in general. Um, but when um, when I go to the more, I guess, meditative stuff, um, it, it often comes from me in emails um, because I, I do get quite a few emails from people asking me about uh, different aspects of secular recovery um, and, you know, about the steps and, um, and sometimes, you know, how they might be able to work, um, you know, some secular steps in a different program, you know, so like in an OA or in a codependency or, you know, something like that. And so I take um, some time to really consider how, you know, my understanding of each step and the way that I do them might be able to translate and what things would work and what wouldn't work. And so when I'm, when I'm, you know, doing an email like that, um, I do feel it's, it's somewhat meditative because I'm getting down all of my ideas on that. And, um, and because it's, it's something that I'm doing to try to help somebody else. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think that that, uh, I have more positive feeling about what I'm writing rather than, you know, sometimes when I'm trying to be creative, um, right. you know, if I'm trying to be creative, I definitely have to do it by hand. Otherwise mm -hmm. I get stuck and keep editing because I'm like, wait, no, right. not that word, not that word. It's too easy for me to do that. So I have yeah. to do that kind of stuff by hand. You know, I might try to try to shift to that because um, I'm writing and I'm using um, Grammarly, which always suggests different words and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. <laughs> like uh, sometimes autocorrect has, has kind of ruined our writing maybe right yeah I, I know that uh i watched a documentary on typewriters because uh -huh. you know, that's the kind of shit that i do uh, yeah. i love the one on pigeons if you haven't seen the documentary on pigeons it is <laughs> it is the best i'm serious i, I yeah. was a little skeptical that you know you should see this documentary on pigeons um but the ones on typewriters um I liked John Mayer, uh, the the singer, musician was on there and that he types. Um, so he carries this electric typewriter with him everywhere. And, um, and he types his stuff out because his mistakes are right there. And so sometimes the mistakes are the things that he adds to the song that makes them better. Um, but he can't correct himself, you know, like I said, on a, on a computer. Um, and so he, you know, feels that it contributes to, you know, his music um being able to do that and uh yeah i i thought it was pretty cool for those of you out there who might want to call in um please do 844-899-8278 love to hear from you if you'd like to talk about what writing has done for you in your sobriety or even before you got sober whatever uh please do i also want to give a special shout out to adina silvestri i was surprised and happy to see her there today mm -hmm. Uh, she is the host of um, Atheist in Recovery podcast, and she oh, does a cool. really great job with that podcast. I love it. So yeah. anyway, um, I was a guest on her show, and she was a guest on ours. Nice. Got to call her, see who this might be. I hope it's somebody nice. Hello, are you nice? <laughs> Hello. Hello. What's Hi, up? Don. Hi, Angela. Hello. Great topic. Oh, thank you. Um, it 
it, uh, when I saw it coming up, I got really excited because riding has been really important in my recovery. Um, when I first got sober, I got assigned over in Korea to an isolated uh, remote site right next to North Korea. Oh. And um, I couldn't get to a meeting, but maybe once a month or so. And so I wrote to all my friends in the United States. And I think I've been trying to recreate that ever since. Um, I wrote to, to uh, Loners Internationalist meeting to the Central Service in New York. Yeah. For years, uh, and that's mostly sailors and and other people who are, who are who are isolated. And there's another group called World Hello of AA writers, uh, all through the speaking uh, English speaking world. That mm-hmm. uh, I was a member for a while. I still write to some of those folks. But since the uh, pandemic, I felt like I was back in Korea. I was so isolated from meetings, mm-hmm. you know? and uh, writing has been really helpful. And you guys are a lifesaver. And you've been listening lately how AA is going to like morph into something different, which is great. I mean, traditional AA hasn't, but this is changing. And, you know, I go to a meeting every night now mm-hmm. on, online. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, I was I was really isolated as an atheist in, LA, uh, in my area. And now I have like minds that I can connect with them. Really grateful to you. I, I've listened to you a lot. I'm really grateful to you. Thanks. Well, thank you. That's yeah, nice to hear. Yeah. And thanks for uh, bringing up those uh, two organizations too. Um, uh, that might be something that uh, that people can look into uh, that want to practice their writing and be of service within mm-hmm. AA. Um, so thank you. I, I had forgotten about those until you mentioned them. Yeah. 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 Learners Internationalist was kind of strained for money, I think. And, yeah. and uh, we're, we're encouraging people to go to World Hello. Another writing challenge that, that, that they offer to people uh, is to prisoners. Um, yeah. I did that for a long time, too, with right to inmates. Yeah. And, uh, you know, a lot of times they're usually fishing for uh, support of one way or another. But, but I've had some pretty good friends uh, through recovery in, in uh, prison systems. Yeah. And I know that's uh, I, I at our district that that was the big thing that they'd always try to get people to volunteer to do to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, that's quite that's quite a, you know it's it's a great service to be able to do that to, for somebody. I'm I'm sure it's yeah because they can't go into jail now. Mm-mm. Nope. Can't go into yeah. jail now. All they nope. do is write. Yep. Definitely. All right. Well, anyway, thank you so much. Oh, thank Good you for calling. I appreciate it. Finally. So where are you calling I really from? Look Virginia. Virginia. Okay. Okay. I wonder if you yeah, know Fred. Yeah. <laughs> but I go to meetings in Kansas City. Are you going to meet? meetings in Kansas City. Oh, do you? Do you go to our, <laughs> our online meetings? Yes, yeah, I do. Okay. Cool. I haven't been going. <laughs> I know I've been looking for you. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I, I'm been, who knows what's going to happen. I, it seems like I've I've turned You're into. Yeah, I've gotten my um, the the podcast and the website and all that kind of stuff has been my uh, recovery. It seems, but um, I do miss the folks in KC. Well, like that was meetings have grown quite a bit now, from what I understand. Uh, so they're good meetings. I like the other podcast too, mm-hmm. and, and I like that you're changing. Because, yeah, you know, traditional AA doesn't. And, yeah, and, and you're yeah. rolling with it. I really like it. beautiful. Thanks. Uh huh. Oh, thanks. Well, thanks for calling. I do appreciate it. It's nice talking to you. Sure. Bye. 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 Yeah. So please do call in. Um, again, the number is eight four four eight nine nine eight two seven eight. Love to hear from you. Oh boy, that's always so cool to hear when somebody likes to. They like what we do. They like the and and uh, just blows me away sometimes to think about that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, writing for writing to people like that. Mm-hmm. That's huge that's that's a great service to be to do something like that i i have not done that um but i i can definitely see how that would be you know good for both parties the person doing the writing and the person getting the letter you know yeah yeah so, joe says another podcast uh, the other podcast <laughs> i'm um, not sure which one he's talking about i i tried another podcast um i did my secular sobriety was another podcast mm-hmm. And I was going to do that, and I just haven't been able to continue it. But what I was hoping to do with that, I was going to be like um, mostly on YouTube, mm-hmm. and do YouTube videos, and have mm-hmm. YouTube videos and podcasting, and it was going to just be secular sobriety, not necessarily AA related. But it's hard to do two podcasts. Yeah. 
<laughs> so I'm just doing this one and now, but yeah, um, definitely. yeah. I, that yeah. might be what he was talking about, but I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. Well, something, yeah, that's something to consider, you know, with, uh, with watching the social dilemma, you know, I've been trying to consider mm -hmm. how, um, how much I want to be involved in uh, social media and, oh, yeah. um, uh, and my biggest difficulty is that, you know, is, is this, you know, yeah. <laughs> is my connection with um, the oh, yeah. A, A Beyond Belief um, community. And, and so I've met so many people and, uh, and love that. And so I, I was thinking like, you know, is there another way that I can create that connection and, and thinking of doing a, mm -hmm. a website and, and possibly doing, you know, something along those lines. So, so I'll keep on the phone, that. Angela. Oh, that's three calls. I bet I you're know. so excited. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Maybe not. Maybe he was the last person. I just didn't hang up. Anyway. Oh, there you are. Hello. Hello, John. Hi. And Angela. Hi. Uh, so this is Robert. Uh, hey, Robert. Robert. And, uh, yeah, and thank you so much for doing this. Uh, I, I really appreciate it. Uh, one of the things that uh, I was struck by is uh, I was listening and the comments were flowing is one of the things that uh, I think AA Beyond Belief uh, has done is it's it's really made uh, sharing secular stories uh, accessible. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to write a, a highly polished piece. Mm -hmm. uh, you can write you know, from the heart, and uh, there aren't many, there aren't many places like that. Yeah. And, and, and I think a lot of the writing is polished, but there's just, there was something, at least for me, that um, it was very inviting. And, uh, and then I think very, very easy to, uh, to work with, with you and others. Mm hmm well, your writing is, as I said, is, is your poetry. I love it. And, you know, for me, it's, uh, it, it's been a great way to introduce me personally to poetry because, you know, I get you, you send me your poem. I have to read, I read it. I had, I had to read it. You know, <laughs> and I'm like, well, I always look forward to it. Yeah. You know, I always look forward to reading it. And yeah. especially now with what's going on in the world, I always wonder, gosh, I wonder what Robert's mm -hmm. going to say this week. <laughs> but, um, and of course, you know, with poetry, I might, I might interpret what you're saying differently from what you are actually meaning to say. So it's like poetry can be very uh, personal for the person reading it, I guess, you know, cause you put your own, mm -hmm. your own, um, whatever's going on in your own life, I guess you might put into the poem that, for the poet yeah. trying to say. So, but yeah. I do love reading it. I absolutely do. I think it's been a huge um, help to AA beyond belief to add the poems. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, but, I, I certainly appreciate that. And, People use them again, at topics of I, meetings too. Did you know that? I've had people tell me that they've used oh. your, <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, cool. Yeah. 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 And, and I think your point that, uh, you know, I find myself especially often, um, you know, writing about things that I wouldn't necessarily be able to frame that way in a meeting or mm -hmm. in, yeah. in meeting meetings. Uh, it's a little easier to do in a secular meeting. Yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, and, and again, I think, you know, for me, uh, I think being able to, to share, uh, poetry, especially with other people in recovery has uh, just really strengthened, uh, you know, my own recovery and, uh, you know, and that's a good thing for all of us. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, I really appreciate, uh, you know, what AA Beyond Belief, uh, just does for, for so many. Yeah. So, so thank you both. Oh, thank you, Robert. So nice to hear from you. Thank you so much for calling. Appreciate it. Okay. And for everything you do. Yeah. Take care. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Robert, he's a, he's a gem. I mean, yeah. I, he can write a poem every day like that. Um, it just blows yeah. me away. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so. I think Maria was asking, I think she was asking about the uh, Adina's, um, Oh, Adina's podcast. Yes. I'm sorry. Atheist yes. in Recovery. Atheist in Recovery. So, 
anyway, I don't I don't log in for the comments. So any of the comments uh, from AA Beyond Belief or John. <laughs> so in yeah. case you were wondering, it's uh, I don't feel like I can oh, uh, right. concentrate uh, as much if I you know if I see it I can respond. Um, but uh, but actually typing something and and listening and being present I, I can't be as present for uh, uh, the community if I log into that. So that's anyway, that's why. The Dina's podcast yeah. um, in here. It's really good. Her episodes are like shorter than ours. She does like maybe 20 minutes or so. And um, it's just, I love her. I love all of her episodes there. It's nice to, it's actually nice to have a shorter, shorter podcast episode to listen to sometimes. Cause that way you can listen to the entire thing in one sitting. Because yeah. most people for an hour podcast, they, they might listen to maybe half of it, you know, and then they pick up the rest of it later on. But I'm going to find, get the link to her um, podcast and post yeah. it here. I yeah. um, I listen to things at, um, at rapid speed. So I turn up the speed of the podcast and listen to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> idea, actually. So it depends on what it is. There are certain things that I do need to listen to at, you know, the, the regular rate so that... Um, I can write things down because, um, yeah, I, I write notes when I listen to podcasts um, uh -huh. to, again, help me uh, process the information a little bit better. Um, and, uh, yeah, and so, you know, when I'm doing that, I, I do it at, at regular speed and, and take notes and I pause it a lot. <laughs> but mm -hmm. if I'm just listening to something, you know, um, as a background or, um, you know, driving or something like that, I, I do listen to them um, at faster speeds. Yeah. And it does sound like Elvin and the Chipmunks sometimes. Yeah. Usually I'm not doing that fast because I do need to understand, you know, their enunciation. <laughs> And that's not as easy to do, but, um, but I do listen to them faster. Um, and so that way I can get, get through quite a few of them. And Maria, uh, uh, in addition to Adina's podcast, Atheist in Recovery, I posted another link to another podcast called Away by Steph Roberts. And she is really good too. And she, she's all, she does all of her episodes um, on regular podcasts, but she also puts them on YouTube and she's one of us. She's a secular person, and she um, is really into the steps and the traditions and speaking about those in a secular way. And her podcast is rated 5.0, whereas AA Beyond Belief is rated 4.5. So uh, <laughs> she's doing a good job. <laughs> yeah. Peter G., my goodness, what is he writing about? Writing like yeah. praying just hasn't been in my toolkit. Oh, Peter, he doesn't like to pray. I don't either. <laughs> 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 the benefit of the step homework producing content for the exercises is that it gave me something to do besides drink. Yeah, it just didn't lead to the authentic reflection or growth for me. Yeah. And I can see that I can see it's different for different people. Um, you know, when you read that book, um, what is it called? Oh, Jeffrey Munn's book, um, sober without God. He recommends writing for almost every single step. I personally didn't do that. I know people who do. I think Angela, you do a lot of writing. Yeah, yeah, we write for like every single step. Yeah, and I can I can see I can see the benefit of that. I think that to a certain degree, I kind of did that because just because I write anyway, um, that I uh, probably did a lot of writing to understand what I was kind of going through anyhow. Yeah, but I didn't write just as like to say to my sponsor, "This is what I wrote," and go over it, anything like that. Yeah. Um, well, and I I. I think it also has to do with learning styles and preferences. And again, you know, if you have uh, different learning disabilities or, you know, physical um, ailments and things, uh, you know, I've had mm -hmm. sponsees that um, that one of them had carpal tunnel mm -hmm. surgery on both hands, you know, so yeah, so it wasn't, you know, wouldn't have been nice for me to be like, uh, no, you have to handwrite everything, you know, <laughs> that doesn't make sense. You so. mentioned he's got two essays on AA Beyond Belief, you know, and they're actually very, very good. We did, we actually did one just, was it just last week? One of his um, yeah. essays. He's like, so actually, Peter, you're a very good writer. Uh, you might not get anything out of it, but we do. So. Yeah. And that's what's important. Yeah. <laughs> right. uh, so cool. Oh yeah. And then he says that uh, you don't say no to an AA request, right? right. Yeah. <laughs> one of my major uh, pet peeves. Yeah. So, Yep, that is true. Um, but yeah, um, 
this episode is on writing, so that's, that's, that's why we're talking about it. Um, yeah. you know, not everybody has to do writing, and and yeah. it's not always helpful. Um, but these are, you know, the ways that I've found it helpful, and and yeah. the the research or things that I've read or heard or you know understood from podcasts on why it's helpful. Mm -hmm. and, and for me, they it's been true. It it does help me to retain information. I think it it helps my vocabulary. Um and it it helps me to process things in yeah, a that's deeper what way. I can uh, process I can process my feelings and thoughts, organize my thoughts and process my feelings, I guess, is yeah. what I do when I is how I use writing so often, you yeah. know. Um yeah, much more uh, deeply personal because I, I can talk about things with people, but I don't always get to the same depth because yeah. there's that part of my brain that uh, that still likes to hang out and, and censor as I'm going along. Um, it usually doesn't do it when it should, um, when it would be helpful to me. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but when I'm you know in conversation with others and trying to share feelings and stuff, sometimes it, it's there. And when I'm writing, um, you know, um, that is bypassed. I, I don't have that as much because nobody has to see what I'm writing um, except me. On the subject of writing as well, I have a book recommendation. Mm. And this is a really interesting book. It's called 25 Years of Listening. Mm. Yes. And this guy, he's in New York City. And he for 25 years, he was going to AA meetings. Here's a link to where you can get the book. Mm -hmm. So for 25 years, he was going to AA meetings. And what he would do, he'd always bring a sketchbook with him to every meeting. Mm -hmm. And he would sketch people at the meetings. And mm -hmm. then he would write little comments that, you know, the comments that they made. So it's a like, that, like like judging comments. <laughs> well, no, it's like it's like it's, it's really incredible. It's like so he's got this book out. I'm I'm gonna mm -hmm. interview him on a podcast. I'm cool. gonna have to after I'm gonna read through the book and everything. But they're just like little things, like um, oh, my sister is a doctor, my brother is a dentist, and I was a self educated diag diagnostician. I went around drunk telling people what was wrong with them. Like yeah. these are the things he's heard in AA meetings. You know, yeah. sobriety is the best deodorant. What doesn't kill me makes me strange. Uh, makes me stranger, <laughs> you know, just different things like that. And then he's got sketches to go with every single one of these things. It's just a such a cool book. So I really would recommend it. I'm that's what I'm going to be reading um, this week, and hopefully we'll have him on the podcast here pretty soon. But see, this is what he did. You know, he was writing, but he was just mm -hmm. writing from, you know down what other people were saying and i've actually seen people do this in meetings too with yeah. little they bring in a pen and paper and write down little um gems that they would hear yeah for me yeah. aa is not a program the pbs news hour is a program aa is a fellowship R -r -r. <laughs> 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 well, I, I like think people call it a program of recovery, but you know, right, it's right. a yeah, it's a personal preference thing. Right. Just like writing or not writing, and writing by hand or doing it on a spreadsheet, and you know, right. whatever works for people and keeps them sober, cool, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So since I've been doing this a beyond belief thing i've been around a lot of a lot of writers mm -hmm. and uh it's been interesting learning from them now here's someone calling area code 905 i wonder what that is hello area code 905 you're caller number four yeah hi, beyond belief. Uh, it's bob k here <laughs> about bob k how are you uh i the same as last time i can barely hear you but so i'll pass some remarks and uh uh just uh, some people may be interested for writing more for publication Mm. I had that interest. I used to watch uh, Johnny Carson drunk, and uh, they'd bring the writer on last and interview him about his book. And uh, so all I wrote, it was in my head, my banter with Johnny, and it was uh, very witty, I can assure you. <laughs> so uh, if people don't want to write a little bit, got to start small. Uh, I belong to a couple of uh, old-fashioned Yahoo and Google groups where we had a weekly meeting and uh there were people in china we were doing a purpose of you know reaching the remotes and anyway a topic you might talk about at a regular meeting you could do a more thoughtful share of four or five paragraphs and uh, i wrote a little for toronto intergroup newsletter and mm -hmm. uh, uh one woman uh, made a comment tonight that uh, boy i really relate to she said 
you know, get something down on paper and, you know, I'll start writing something and I'll go, I don't like the fourth sentence. And I just keep plowing through. I'll leave a paragraph unfinished and jump on to whatever when my brain is firing, uh, getting it down on paper. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy to go back to it and fix it. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I have a book in print and, uh, Roger, uh, notified me about four months ago. He says, He'd gone through and done a review of my essays on the two websites, Agnostic and Beyond Belief. Mm -hmm. And he said next time I wrote something, he's going to publish that list, uh, just, I guess, uh, in appreciation of the contribution. And I thought, well, I have 20 20 essays from my book, probably 20 more. It's 90, 90 essays between the two websites and, you know, counting book reviews and whatever. That's incredible. uh, Anyway, it's given me a new enthusiasm about AA. I love it. I was writing on the yellow legal pad today, Angela, (laughs) my dear. Yay. I like to write on the computer, but I still do the old fashioned transcribe it, then edit it. So I have two more books and kind of like uh, perpetual editing is what they're in right now. So good, uh, good meeting as usual. You guys are doing a fabulous job. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate you calling. Yeah. Thanks for all your contributions, Bob. Yeah. I'm excited to read that book when it's published. Yeah. Yeah. He's working on a book. It's like, um, it's a fictional biography of Bill Wilson. Mm-hmm. And he's been working on it for a long time. He's got one character there that he's named after me. And the guy doesn't do very well. The guy, <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy ends up dying. <laughs> he, I, the guy doesn't end up staying sober or whatever. He was, um, I think he was like um, a rum runner, mm. which kind of fits because my family was rum, were rum runners back in the day. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you for calling, Bob. I appreciate that. Right. Um, gosh, we're coming up on an hour, aren't we? 56, 27, four minutes left to go. Oh, yes. Bob says, I'm the hero of the book. I don't think so, Bob. You kill me off pretty early. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's all about drunks, then maybe that's a good thing. <laughs> Bob, okay. He, um, so we're coming up on our fifth year anniversary at AA Beyond Belief. Yeah. And Bob was like um, the first person that, that Roger introduced to me mm-hmm. um, to help out with the website. And yeah. so like Roger loaded up a bunch of Bob's stories, um, Bob's articles from his book uh, and our website that we could publish mm-hmm. and so forth. And Bob was like my partner in the very early days. And he was so supportive because I would be like totally nervous about like, oh my God, we have to po- publish something and all this kind of crap. And Bob was always very laid back and and didn't worry about it very much. So he's just, he's a great guy to have around. And I appreciate everything he's done for A Beyond Belief. I don't know if we... If if I could have done it without him, I really don't yeah. know. So thank you, well, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Yeah. It's been so nice to get to know you too over the years. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. So anyway, what else can we say about this topic of writing? Oh, me nervous? You bet, Bob. All the time. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't know if there's anything else uh, anyone wants to talk about with writing i I think Um, we've pretty much covered covered a lot of writing um there's lots of different prompts out there um lots of different uh um you know daily reflections that you can use or you know i I really liked that one from the mindful journal on you know just finding an object and uh thinking about that or um i know i've gone to coffee shops and just like wrote down you know something kind of like the book you were talking about um except Mm -hmm. in a coffee shop um Mm -hmm. part of a conversation that people are having because most of us don't really pay attention (laughs) to, to what we're saying where anymore um and then you know making up my own story about what the those people's lives might be like and um you know and so being creative that way and uh, and while it may not actually be, you know, AA related or recovery related, um, it's something that helps me activate my creativity. And that's something that um, that is important to me and helps me to, you know, stay sober is to feel mm-hmm. like I'm being creative and um, continuing to learn and, and grow and uh, have fun. Yeah, 
Thank you, Joe. It's so nice. I love it when you guys um, give us this feedback because it surprises me sometimes like, oh, this was actually a good podcast episode. <laughs> I'm <laughs> glad you enjoyed it. You know what it is though? I just like being, it's just, it's just us being together. It's just, it's like being at a meeting. It's just us all interacting with one another. That's what makes these live streams so much fun is that, you know, you can make comments, you can call in and we have this interaction Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot different from just an, an audio podcast that you record one day and, and release the next. So it's kind of fun having these, um, this opportunity to do these live streams, you know, you guys yeah. make it, you, the people, all of you, all of us together make this, make this what it is. So, yeah. so thank you so much for that. So yeah. next week, Angela, mm -hmm. I don't know how we're going to do this, but I would like to do a special episode about just AA beyond belief, the five years. <laughs> and maybe if you don't mind, we can just do an episode where you can just ask me some questions about it. And okay. maybe, maybe I can reach out to somebody, maybe have a, have some guests on uh, along with us or something. I don't know. Like just, just yeah. do something. I think you should just um, get some phone numbers of the people that, that you want and then we'll just call them. You know? Yeah. That could yeah. Be the phone a friend and, yeah. uh, you know, or uh, like one of those morning show, you know, call things and they'll be like, what? But and, uh, actually, nobody actually answers their phone anymore. So that probably like wouldn't work. From across, like I'm patting myself on the back or I just want anything like that. But it's like this A Beyond Belief thing has been so transformative to me personally. And it's been, um, I almost feel like it's been a gift. Yeah. Um, it's not something that I ever thought I would ever experience, but it's been something that has absolutely changed me personally and my recovery. And it's just something that I just want to, um, I, I feel like I have to, I have to express my gratitude to mm -hmm. everybody for just giving me this opportunity to do this. So um, right. thank you very much, everybody. So and anyway. you should pat yourself on the back. This isn't an <laughs> easy thing to do. I mean, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of work and effort and you've put a lot into it. And there's a lot of great content and a yeah. variety of content on there. And you're easy to talk to and even difficult, you know, people that you've either interviewed or, you know, have had on. <laughs> you're you're so nice. I mean, you you just kind of go with it. And um, and I've heard some podcasts <laughs> where where people don't go with it. Uh, Oh, yeah. it's, it's very uncomfortable to listen to. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I don't debate. I, I almost, I, I sometimes wonder, is it a Midwestern thing? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever it is. I just, I hate debating. Although, you know, I was on the, I was thinking about this. I was on the debate team and I, was, <laughs> I absolutely hate to debate. <laughs> the thing. Anyway. Uh, funny. So that's but, it, yeah. everybody. We're going to sing us out this way. Now, sometimes the music sounds really weird on the live stream. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're going to pick really weird music. Yeah. <laughs> so that's it. That's another episode of AA Beyond Belief, the podcast. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week to celebrate, AA, to celebrate Beyond Belief. AA Beyond Belief, another five years. Until then, you all take care. Be well. We'll be back again real soon. Bye bye. Bye bye.